Yo, what's good? We're back. A bit more cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, the book dealing with some of the things around the anxiety and whatnot. Um, we're in with chapter four, automatic, automatic negative thoughts, or they call ants. Like I said, it is impossible to talk about cognitive behavioral therapy without mentioning negative thoughts. Automatic negative thoughts are the basis of anxiety, depression, addiction, phobia, and other mental health problems that leave people unhappy. You may refer to automatic negative thoughts as the thoughts that make up your belief system. Your thoughts can either be positive or negative. This is a natural thing. However, autom automatic negative thoughts are different from normal negative thoughts. This is because your mind generates them subconsciously without your permission. Most times, you also have no control over them. Automatic negative thoughts have profound effects on emotions and behaviors, which is what CBT seeks to correct. The whole concept behind CBT is to replace existing negative, thought, negative thinking patterns with newer and more positive ones, so as to change a person's behaviors. When something happens, the brain automatically forms a negative thought in the subconscious. The thought then influences how you interpret the event that just took place. The interpretation you give to a situation, that is how you think about it, is what determines the emotional response that situation elicits. How you feel then determines how you react or behave due to the situation. It is really that simple. There are so many ways in which automatic negative thoughts are generated, many of which are you are probably not even aware of. The interesting thing I want, I want you to know about this is that you usually have no idea what your mind is doing, just like everybody else. Often, automatic negative thoughts become such a part of you that you no longer even know that there is a negative thinking pattern. This could be due to many reasons, some of which I will talk about as we proceed in this book. Research into automatic negative thoughts started in the 1960s. It was pioneered by Dr. Aaron Beck, who tried to understand... Sorry who tried to understand how negative thoughts impact depression. However, the concept of automatic negative thoughts has been made more popular by Dr. Daniel Amen in recent years. According to Amen, when you have negative thoughts, the brain generates electrical and chemical signals, which activate the limbic system. With time, as the automatic thoughts become too much, the limbic system becomes overwhelmed, causing a neural pathway to be established in the brain. When this occurs, you start to experience anxiety, depression, moodiness, and mild irritation. Interestingly, negative thoughts can be pretty helpful sometimes, just like negative emotions. What do I mean by this? Well, when a distressing event takes place, the mind automatically puts certain things in place to, re to prevent you from feeling hurt or heartbroken. From this angle, Automatic negative thoughts are generated by your mind to protect you from perceived harm or to minimize the impact on you when it does happen. However, the problem begins when the automatic negative thoughts become dominant in your mind, to the extent that they take over control of your feelings, behaviors, and life in general. So many stresses exist in life. They make it quite easy for anybody to slip into a cycle of anxiety and depression. Automatic negative thoughts help fuel this cycle so you remain trapped. As I have already acknowledged, automatic negative thoughts can take different forms with different people. To break negative thinking patterns, it is important first to identify and recognize them. This is one of the things that take place in CBT sessions. Your therapist helps you identify the particular thinking pattern responsible for your emotional and behavioral state. Some of the patterns your therapist may identify include all or nothing thinking. If you think in black and white without leaving a gray area, that is referred to as all or nothing thinking. People with the all or nothing thinking pattern usually think in extreme absolutes, leaving themselves vulnerable to automatic negative thoughts. There is usually no middle ground for an all or nothing thinker. They will think along the lines of, 
Oh, there is no way I'm going to pass this class since I failed my first test. It means I will also fail my examination. An all or nothing thinker, uh, an all or nothing thinking pattern makes it difficult to see a possible silver lining or a grey area like, if I failed my test, then I have to work harder so I can pass my examination and pass this class. Just a quick admission, I actually <laughs> have been um, identified as an all or nothing thinker. Labeling. This is a negative thinking pattern which is quite common. Labeling is when you tag yourself using names or terms that connote negativity. If you constantly refer to yourself with negative terms, your brain automatically accepts that as, accepts that as truth and runs with it, resulting in a self-fulfilling prophecy. For example, saying something like, I'm a failure, makes your brain accept that you are a failure and you will automatically stop seeing yourself as anything but a failure. You begin to feel and act like a failure, even though you aren't one. You have trained your body to respond to negative thoughts, names and terms, and you start to respond accordingly. Emotional thinking. This is a more common negative thinking pattern that most people realize, and it almost always disguises itself as the truth. It is thinking with your feelings. You are unable to question this kind of thinking so you listen to it by default. It usually involves jumping to negative conclusions about a behavior, habit or goal. You are basically using your emotions to interpret the state of reality. Fortune telling. You have a negative habit of predicting bad outcomes for yourself. Usually this happens as a result of you being several steps ahead of your ambition in life. Unfortunately, you never believe anything can be positive so you never believe anything positive can come out of a situation. You also don't try and see positive perspectives. A typical fortune teller will always think like, I won't get a job no matter how hard I try, so what's the point? Or, I will never make it, so what's the point of graduating from school? And mind reading. Also referred to as brain reading, this is basically you making assumptions about what you perceive to be people's behaviours towards you or their opinions about you. You always think you know what they are thinking about you and these thoughts are usually not positive. For instance, you may believe they hate you or they don't want you, you to achieve anything in life. An example of a, of a mind reading statement is, my colleagues at work hate me, they don't want me to be promoted. This kind of thinking pattern usually affects your social relationships because they influence how you feel and behave towards people. People also interpret these negative thinking patterns in different negative ways. Instead of understanding that these thoughts are just thoughts, you interpret them as reality. The negative ways of interpreting things include A. Personalization. These aren't listed A, B, C, but I'm just going to try and give them to differentiate it for you guys a bit. Personalization. This kind of interpretation is based on cognitive distortion. Sorry, this kind of interpretation is based on cognitive distortion, usually caused by stress. It happens when you blame yourself for something that happens instead of understanding that things can't always be under your control. Personalization is when you apportion blame to yourself because you hit a bump on the road instead of trying to figure out why you hit the bump. People who personalize always say something like, oh, this is always my fault, without trying to understand where the problem is coming from. This is a negative way of interpreting events that is quite irrational, illogical, and without basis. If you interpret things this way, chances are you will find yourself always internalizing your emotions and feelings, even when they need even when they need to be expressed. B. Overgeneralization. I like to think that this is even worse than personalization because this way of thinking is bizarre. Overgeneralization has to do with the belief that something will happen again because it happened once, especially when this thing is negative. If you have been in a situation you didn't like and you start thinking that this situation will repeat itself, you are overgeneralizing. It is especially overgeneralization when you, when you have no other proof 
or evidence to serve as the basis of your belief. You just believe it so. For example, if someone at work gets a plum project from the boss instead of you, you would overgeneralize by thinking, that is just how I always lose out on everything. Tough luck. C. Overthinking. Have you ever thought about something and tried to look at all the thousand choices with regards to that, to that thing so you can make the best decision? That is overthinking. Overthinking is the habit of going over multiple choices in your mind in a bid to visualize the possible outcome of every single choice in a particular situation. People who overthink do so, who overthink do so to avoid making mistakes or errors. It is a way of attempting to achieve perfection. However, overthinking is not healthy because it is an attempt to control the uncontrollable. Unless the person is God, no one has the magic to know what will happen in the future. Therefore, every choice we make in life is one with unknown possibilities. For instance, if you get a new job, you have no way of knowing how it will pan out. Trying to analyze the situation in order to outline the possible outcomes takes away the joy in that thing. If you think so much about your new job, you will likely lose the happiness that comes from being employed and become too anxious or worried about the uncertainty that lies ahead. D. Negative remun remunation. Sorry, negative rumination. I'm so sorry. Self-reflection is normal, healthy and necessary. However, it becomes negative when you do it over and over in a negative manner. Rumination is a negative way of thinking and interpreting reality. It is, it is the kind of thinking in which you get stuck in a mental spiral, thinking about the same thing over and over without stopping or even making process, progress. Negative rumination is an unhealthy way of thinking and interpreting because it makes you worried, anxious and fearful. The more you think about the negative aspect of a situation, the more anxious you become. A typical scenario of negative rumination. Let's say your partner breaks up with you because she no longer has an interest in the relationship. Naturally, you would be heartbroken and sad. But when you replace that heartbreak, heartbreak with worry, it becomes problematic. You may start to imagine yourself being alone forever, without ever getting married or having kids, or meeting anybody else who loves you. In this situation, you may even take your rumination up a notch. You start thinking of your friends getting married and never talking with you ever again, because they now have families to concentrate on. So you end up lonely and you die in a cold empty room with no one to attend to your corpse. That is how far rumination can go. Rumination is a breeding ground for anxiety and depression. It makes you focus on how you feel, the reason for that feeling, and how you ended up in that situation. Sorry, in the situation that is making you feel bad. At some point, you may completely disregard the fact that it was actually just you cooking up all those scenarios in your head. Simply because of your breakup, because you know it. Sorry, before you know it, you actually start to see yourself as a loser and you lose all motivation to even try to get your girlfriend back, if possible, solve the problem you are faced with. E. Cynical hostility. A profound distrust of others and unfounded hostility towards them because of that mistrust is what is known as cynical hostility. The interesting thing, sorry, the interesting thing is that this mistrust usually originates from your thoughts and your thoughts alone. Cynical hostility is a negative way of thinking and reacting angrily to people just because you have certain thoughts of them and you have interpreted these thoughts to be reality. It is a misguided and distorted interpretation of reality. You tend to think of other people as threats, betrayers or dangerous. When someone does something that should ordinarily be minor, you interpret it in the worst, worst way possible. If the kids are playing and make a ruckus, you may think it is because they intentionally want to give you a migraine. You may also think that someone at work is intentionally doing something to make you angry to the point where you lose your job. If you are on the road and a driver in front is driving really slowly, you might think the person is intentionally driving slow so they can delay you. 
It goes on and on. If you meet someone at the mall and they act nice by trying to be your friend, you might believe it is because they have an ulterior motive. Cynical hostility makes you think the worst of everybody. This kind of thinking and interpretation can ruin your relationships and affect your health adversely because your mind is never at rest. In fact, studies have revealed that cynical hostility is related to high blood pressure, heart disease, shorter tel telomeres, I don't know what that is, and other health conditions. Negative thinking patterns and negative ways of interpreting events are what causes a distorted view of reality. This leads to anxiety, depression, anger disorders, addiction, and several other mental or physical health conditions. In a later chapter, when I talk about the different CBT intervention practices, I will talk more about automatic negative responses, automatic negative thoughts, sorry, and how they are addressed in cognitive behavioral therapy sessions. But right now, I want to talk about the effect our childhood and upbringing can have on the automaticity of, of negative thoughts and also give you tips on how to start combating automatic negative thoughts on your own. Negative thoughts don't become automatic by accident. They become automatic after being ingrained in the mind a long time ago, i.e. childhood. It's actually difficult to start having negative thoughts as an adult unless you have been building it up from childhood. Okay, so we're going to cut that there. In the next chapter, we're going to jump into childhood and then breaking automatic negative thought patterns. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.